The search for Flight 370 resumed this morning after the weather improved. Holly Williams is in Perth, Australia, where our cameras were allowed to witness part of the search firsthand. Holly, good morning. Good morning. There is excitement here over those new satellite photos that you just heard about from Seth. And now there is a race to find exactly where Flight 370 went down and hopefully it's black boxes. CBS News flew on a P-3 Orion search plane today with the New Zealand Air Force. 1,500 miles off Australia's west coast, they were just a few hundred feet over the sea, combing the waters for fragments of the Malaysian Airlines jet. It's uh, affecting a lot of people, so definitely, you know, um, to come out and put some closure on, on something for them, you know, would be, would be, um, would be awesome. An Australian naval ship and a Chinese icebreaker are also in the search area, carrying out a surface sweep. The search zone has been narrowed down with the help of satellite data, but it's still roughly the size of Alaska. Experts believe most of the plane's wreckage probably sank, so the crews here are hunting for clues that will help them find an underwater debris field. That's when they'll begin to use this American robotic submarine. It uses sonar to locate objects up to 20,000 feet under the ocean's surface. The U.S. Navy has also sent something called a towed pinger locator to Australia, which hones in on sounds emitted by the plane's black boxes. If they can be found, investigators may finally discover why Flight 370 plunged into the southern Indian Ocean, along with the 239 people on board. The problem is that towed pinger locator can't be used until they find a small debris field. Now, they still haven't done that, and the transponders on the black boxes may only have 12 days of battery life left. Charlie, Clarissa. Thanks, Holly.